G'day guys, Dane here with Clarkie's NRL show. A little bit different again here today, guys. No interview, no tips, no breakdown. I wanted to answer the most commonly asked question um, that I get across my social medias, and that's often people starting up a new NRL page and looking for some tips and advice. Now, I'll preface this by saying this isn't specific to NRL. These sort of tips will work across any sort of sporting page. So if you're an NBA fan, NFL, AFL, whatever it is, whatever your code is across the world, wherever you're watching from, these tips here have helped me grow into the second largest sports reporter in Australia around rugby league. Now for me, that's very impressive. I mean, the number one guy um, is the Mole. He works for Channel 9, who's the biggest broadcasting company here. Um, he's worked for the largest rugby league magazine here for, I think it was over 20 years. And I'm a kid that's, you know, um, a couple years out of high school just doing this because I love it. And, you know, when I, when I think about that, it does blow my mind. But it, it also makes me feel qualified, I, I guess, in some ways to sit here and give you these tips because these are the ones I've followed. How this video is going to work now, um, first of all, I've got to say thank you for being here because I know there's so many over the internet that they want to drag it out over that 10 minute mark to get their ads revenue and by the end of the video, you're left not really having too much tips. Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. This is no bullshit here. Everything I'm going to tell you is what I have used and what I continue to use. There's nothing I'm going to keep secret from you in this and if you have any other questions, feel free to message me on Facebook, Clarkies NRL column, Instagram at Clarkies NRL column, or Twitter, Clarkies underscore column. Okay, I'm always available over there and I'm happy to answer the questions. All right, let's start with number one. <clears throat> First thing you need to know, um, and this is, I'm just going to be talking to this camera, guys, because I don't want to be doing fancy transitions and crap that you don't want to see. You're here for information and I'm about to give it to you. Now you've bared through two minutes of me talking. Number one, there is no secret, guys. There is... No website you can buy genuine, real followers or likes from that will interact and love your posts. There is no one thing you do overnight and you wake up the next day with over a thousand likes. The only secret to it, guys, is hard work. And that's the only way. You really need to think about it beforehand, guys, because you have to understand... If you're wanting to make an NRL page, I'll, I'll use NRL as my example, guys, but remember, this is appropriate to every sport. If you're wanting to make an NRL page, and after the first week, you only feel like posting maybe once per week, there's someone else in Australia or in the world that has an NRL page that is willing to post two times per week. So the idea of trying to outwork, I guess, your competition is a valid point here. There are nights where I'm sitting right now where I'm talking to you guys um, at 1 a.m. in the morning. Still here working, um, scheduling posts on my phone, I'll get to that later, uh, working on graphics designs, cutting up interviews. There is no secret, guys. That's the biggest thing that people need to understand when they're considering making a page. You need to sit down and you really need to think, can you commit at least one to two hours a day of posting regularly, finding the news, um, thinking of ideas on what to post on, um, replying to people's comments, scrolling through social media, etc., etc. There's a big commitment that comes with it. And as I said, there is no secret. Number two, don't do it for the money. <clears throat> now, I've seen a couple NRL pages in particular that um, they start up and they buy a couple followers and they buy a couple likes and then they reach out to some cruddy company. Um, I'm not going to give any examples in particular here, but you know exactly what I'm talking about with the pages I'm talking about here and they advertise their products for them. And at the end of the day, there are paid professionals, guys, that will always do a better job than us. That's just how it is. You know, I've probably I've written over 6,000 columns, etc. I think I'm a pretty good writer. There's someone that's done a four-year university course that's more qualified and better than me. And that's the end of the story, guys. So if you're in it for the money, it's just simply not going to work. People will read the bullshit and they will ditch. When I first started, guys, my niche was the fact you could get your NRL news in one spot on Facebook without having to click off to another website and put up with ads, etc. I, I still wrote the information myself, but I got no information from people. I was just getting it from other websites and compiling it into one location. And that's another thing I'll get onto um, later about finding your niche, etc. I'm not saying you can't make money from a Facebook page, guys, because I'd be a hypocrite. I've made about $800 now in four years, which isn't great, but I have made money. 
and you can make money, but please don't be putting an ad on every single post because Fox Sports, Channel 9, they all do it, but the difference is they are paid professionals and their work is a much higher quality. People expect the ads there. People want to go to your page and they don't want to be bombarded with ads. They want to hear about footy or basketball or whatever sport it is. So please be careful with how um, you're making this page because as I said, if you are doing it for money, you're going to be found out pretty quick. Um, Number three I've got written down here is interaction. Whether that's following, liking, commenting, everywhere guys. Get your name out there. So what I did when I first started Instagram was I went to the most popular NRL Instagram page, League Central. I went to their most recent post and everyone that had liked it, I followed them. And you can follow up to 160 per hour. And I'd set an alarm and I did that for about 12 hours a day. So I was following almost 2,000 people a day. I did that for a week. About 3,000 of those followed me back. And there's no reason why you can't do that. The only reason I've since unfollowed those people is because I use my Instagram now as a professional platform and I need to get notifications from when players like, comment, etc., etc. And I can't be following multitudes of people or my phone would be ringing all day. And the idea of getting your name out there, you don't have to follow. You can like. You can comment. Let's say Damien Cook puts a photo up. You can comment with your, your page. Um, you know, great game today. Say LeBron James puts up a thing. Say, you know, LeBron, you played incredible today, etc. There are ways to get your way out there without shameless self-promotion. And then I'll give you a Facebook example here, guys, because I've just given a Twitter, Instagram specific. For Facebook, write your article around a club that it's based around. Join that club's fan page or, uh, you know, so let's say the Sharkies, Google Cronulla Sharks groups. Google, sorry, Facebook search. Cronulla Sharks groups. Request to join them and share your work into the group so that Sharks fans will see it. You don't want to be doing, because the way that the social media algorithms all work, if you were to just put in their group, hi guys, follow me, no one's going to like or comment on that, and therefore Facebook is going to discard it instantly and not show it to anyone. Therefore, what you've effectively done is nothing. No one will see it. It's that simple. I know the group might have 50,000 people, but if it's not gaining likes and comments, Facebook will kick it to the side. Trust me. Trust me on that. But if you're sharing your work in there, Perhaps people will like it or comment. All right, let's move on to number four. Download Hootsuite or any scheduling app. So I use Hootsuite every day, guys, on my phone. Um, What it does here, and I'll get it up to show you an example on the screen. I've got scheduled posts. Now, I've got work tonight. But at 4.30 p.m., I'll have that column coming out. And at 5 p.m., I'll have my top 10 halfbacks. Tomorrow, uh, I've got top 10 fullbacks etc etc so what that allows me to do is essentially work around the clock without needing to be there and i just think it's a great you know i I, if i'm on so tonight i'll go to work from 6 p.m to 6 a.m i will sleep until about midday but you would have noticed today i had an article at at 7 30 a.m because i scheduled it the night before so be smart with it guys you can't obviously outwork your i'll use the word competition or your competitors by being up 24 7 but you can schedule work in the correct time slot. There are multiple apps for it. I've used Hootsuite and um, I find it's fine. So that is the one I would recommend to you, but there there are multiple other options. I think Buffer is another one. Just excuse me if I'm just taking a sip if you're listening on um, audio there. We have number six and this, uh, number five, sorry. And this comes back to what I was just talking about scheduling there. Find the right time. So for me, for example, I live in Australia and I've used my analytics to discover most people are on their phones around 7 till 8, 11 till 1 p.m., 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. So you'll notice, guys, and if you follow me for a while, you'll notice, unless it's a weekend, I won't have a post out at 3 p.m. unless it's breaking news. I won't have a post out at 10 a.m. unless it's breaking news because I've studied my analytics to know that There's not much people on their phone there. Therefore, less people will like and comment. Therefore, the faster Facebook, Instagram will discard your post and stop showing it to a range of people. It's all about the interaction, guys. That's what you need to sort of aim. You want to be getting likes. You want to be getting comments. You want to be getting shares. You want people tagging their friends because that's what Facebook and Instagram see and go, oh, good post. Let's keep showing it. The moment that stops is the moment Facebook and Instagram go, eh, crap post. So use your analytics Post all different times when you first start out. Try 10 a.m. It could work for you. Um, Try 9 p.m. It could work for you. But for me, 
my times are 7 till 8, 11 till 1, 4 p.m. till 8. And I find any time in between them is when I get the most interaction. Number six is find your niche, guys. Now, you don't want to be that page that tries to do everything but everything and does everything all right but does nothing good. If your niche, for the NRL physio example, his niche is injuries. He's an injury specialist. We're not going to see the NRL physio posting up breaking news, Jazz Tavunga's re-signed for two years today. That's not his niche. And you need to sort of find a niche in the game. And as I told you, when I first started, my niche was the fact, and this was four years ago, so it was very different. There was not many fan pages at all. My niche was all the news compiled into one spot on your Facebook. You do not need to go search all websites, click everywhere, uh, put up with ads. Here it all is for you. And that really worked. That's what got me my start. That's how I took off, um, I suppose you could say. But I see a lot of pages that are just reposting the NRL stuff and screenshotting Fox Sports stuff or taking the Daily Telegraph photos and posting it. The chances are, guys, if they want to follow you, they already follow these larger news media outlets. So when you sit there and you're copying their stuff, it's not an attractive look for your page. And um, like I said, you need to find your niche. It can be anything. Mine now is, I guess, looking at my Instagram, my niche is player Q&As. Um, people play, I get NRL players, for those that don't know, they're professional rugby league players. They jump on my page um, and I get them to answer questions. My niche is writing columns. I do a bit of graphic design. I have a few niches now, but that's because I am a, a larger platform. When you're starting out, you need something to really help you grow. Uh, number seven. Don't worry about people copying you. I used to waste so much time, guys, messaging pages. Hi, you've copy-pasted my thing. Hi, you've taken my photo. But at the end of the day, if people are copying your stuff, it shows that they lack the creative mind to have their own account, and therefore their account will die out. They will lose their passion because they they, they simply don't have it. I mean, if they are stealing your stuff, guys, you have to think. They don't have the creative mind that you have. And I know it's hard to take it as a compliment because I've been there and it is so frustrating, but it really is. They think your work's good enough to steal onto their page. And at the end of the day, guys, like I said, don't let it get to you. I wasted so much energy and time on this when I started out. If someone's copying you, sure, send them a message. Hi, you copy pasted this. Could I get some credit? Hi, you stole my photo. Could I get some credit? If they want to be smart or sell some sort of arguments, claim they got it from Google, etc., etc., don't waste your time, guys. Block them. Move on. Which brings me to a little side note here. Don't be afraid to block people. When I first started out, I thought it was a terrible idea to block people because I'd have less people commenting. But the people I wasn't blocking were just commenting horrible stuff um, and weren't providing any sort of constructive criticism or constructive conversation. It was just... Um, you know, swear words, abuse, and I was scared to block them because I thought, well, I don't want to lose, um, you know, this sort of interaction. I, my numbers might go down. Don't be scared, guys. You don't have to. You don't have to take crap from anyone. If people are being rude on your page, block them. Get rid of them. All right. On to number eight now. Post every single day. Why? Because if you don't, someone else will. It's that simple. And you want to be the one attracting people to your page. Now, you want to develop hashtags as well if you're on social media that are specific to your to um, to whatever you want to post about. So, you know, if you're here and you're making a cats page, you might use hashtag cats, hashtag kittens, hashtag cute. I, for example, uh, NRL. So my hashtags that I'm used, I'll just get them on Instagram now. Hashtag NRL, Clarkie's Column, Rugby League, um, Bronx Nation, Ride'em Cowboys. And for those that don't follow the NRL wondering what the hell that is, that's the official club hashtags. So if you're an NBA fan, what's the official Lakers hashtag? What's the official Timberwolves hashtag? What's the official Clippers hashtag? Go and grab them and put them on your post because when fans follow that hashtag, they will see it pop up. Um, and I suppose, you know, for Facebook, because there isn't a hashtag thing, like I said, if you do have good work, not just crap, good work, feel free to share it into fan groups and get the interaction that way. But the idea of not posting every day, guys, is silly. Think how often you're on your phone. Just stop right now and think about it. How often am I on my mobile phone? I know for myself, it's probably two to four hours a day, maybe more. If you're not posting every day, you're missing golden opportunities to capitalize. I'll leave it at that. Number nine, have an opinion. 
And I suppose this goes back to don't just repost other people's stuff, but when you have an opinion, guys, people are more inclined to comment and either agree or disagree. And you wanna open the floor for discussions because comments spark interaction, which then brings it up on Facebook, for example. This friend commented on Clarky's post. Instagram and your discover. Instagram, this is a popular thing. I'm going to put it in this person's discover. When you're sparking conversation, guys, you are essentially growing your reach. You are reaching more people without even realizing it. And that's why it's important to have an opinion because people will comment whether they agree or disagree. Always try to spark discussion, guys. I'm sure you'll notice if you follow me, I finish all my stuff with a question. If someone has just re-signed, I'll say, do you think this is a good signing? Et cetera, et cetera. You really want to drive comments, guys, and a good way to do that is by having an opinion. And number 10, guys, my final tip is leverage your profile into another avenue eventually. Now, you don't want to to start off with too much too soon, but for myself, this year in particular, I have um, leveraged out into player Q&As, player interviews, playing Rugby League Live 4 on YouTube. Um, If you're listening to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever, whatever podcast you're listening to right now, podcasts. I've got another podcast, the Set of Six podcast. You want to leverage your profile into other avenues, and that could be a merchandise, um, it could be a podcast, it could be YouTube, it could be anything you want it to be. It could be another sporting page. If you're an NRL fan and you're also a fan of soccer, you could make a soccer page and leverage into that. But the idea of you know having tens of thousands of followers and not trying to leverage into your next goal or your podcast or something else that you're passionate about is silly. Make the most of your profile. That's um, what I'm trying to say there, guys. So again, brief recap, all 10 of them, guys. There's no secrets. You need to work hard. Number two, don't do it for money. People will figure you out. Number three, interact with people. Follow, like, comment, share. Number four, up. Uh, Download Hootsuite or any app that helps you schedule your posts so you can post actively. Number five, find your right time to post. You don't want to be posting at midnight, etc. Number six, find your niche. Find something why people should follow your page over others. Seven, uh, don't... What what have I even written here? My writing is terrible. Don't worry about people copying you. Sorry for that little right there. Um, you know, people that are copying you, don't waste your energy there. Um, just don't do it, guys. Block them. Get rid of them. Make sure you're developing a positive community, essentially. Number eight, post every day. If you're not going to post every day, guys, someone else is. Number nine, have an opinion. That will spark comments, which will help you grow faster. And number 10, eventually you want to leverage your profile into your next dream. Whether that's a podcast, YouTube channel, merchandise, it can be anything, guys. It's entirely in your point. Number 11, make sure you got neat handwriting and you don't write like me and get stuck on number seven in the middle of a video, guys. But hopefully um, everyone that is thinking about making a sports page can take something out of this. I tried to make the video um, so it just felt like it was me having a chat to you and giving you the tips as opposed to an over-edited transitions from one, two, three, all the way through where I'm just feeding you bullcrap to get you to sit there longer so I can make more money off ads. There'll be no ads on this video, guys, as you'll notice. And um, again, that goes back to number two. Don't do it for money. Um, But hopefully, yeah, I, I do think these tips, you'll get something out of them, guys. And as I said at the start, if you have further questions, I'm always available on social media at quarkies.nrl.com. You can search that on Facebook, um, Twitter, or Instagram. I will come up and answer any more questions you have, guys. Thanks so much for your time today. Hopefully, this video benefits you in some way. And um, if it does, be sure to leave a like, comment, etc. Cheers, guys, and I'll um, see you guys in the next video.